What is going on everyone? Phil here for KO Gaming and it's time to once again explore the world of spin-offs. That's right, when your favorite game publishers and game developers take a tried and true AAA franchise and decide to take it and dilute it into a bunch of crappy side games that have absolutely nothing to do with the core franchise and are made sorely for the sake of making extra money. Let's take a quick look back at early 2012 when a game called Operation Raccoon City was released by Capcom which was supposed to be the integration of third person action combat run and gun gameplay similar to previous franchises such as SOCOM combined with the world of Resident Evil. What proceeded to happen was the clash of two universes that never should have been combined, a game that had sorely very little content for a full $60 price tag. After playing it for around 5 hours there was absolutely nothing left to do. It was repetitive, boring, uninspired, a complete and utter ripoff, and to make matters worse, it even tried to nickel and dime the consumer with pricey DLCs to get all the content that was already on the game disc. The game critically flopped, was a sales failure, and ultimately we hoped we'd never see this kind of thing again. And so, when it was announced that another third-person style shooter spin-off to the Resident Evil franchise would be released, the internet let out a collective groan of dismay. At least in this regard, Capcom learned because Umbrella Core is only being sold for $30 as a digital-only release, so at least they're not trying to rip you off for a full retail price like they did with Raccoon City. But is the game any good? Let's take a look. The premise of Umbrella Corps is simple. You are a living experiment or a lab rat hired by Umbrella to either kill off hordes of zombies or other human opponents in a controlled environment. And boy does the game love to drone that idea into your head as it says lab rat repeatedly in every voiceover no matter what mode of the game you're playing. Speaking of modes, there's a single player campaign, if you can even call that, in which you're basically completely by yourself inside of an enclosed environment. You're going to be tasked with killing a bunch of repetitive zombie enemies, collect their DNA samples, wash, rinse, and repeat. Every stage will unlock a new weapon. Eventually, zombies will start to come after you more aggressively, and you just have to survive within a certain time frame. The further you play into it, you'll unlock different enemy types, such as the dog, as well as other gun types. Basically, this single player is completely a waste of your time. You won't unlock anything significant by playing it. It takes about 90 minutes to complete and it's utterly worthless. The meat of the game was obviously put into the multiplayer and that's what the game designers are intending you to play. Now, unlike Operation Raccoon City, which tried to blatantly copy the gameplay of SOCOM, Umbrella Corps is trying to emulate some of the more popular cooperative buddy-style third-person shooters that have released in the past few years. You're going to have two modes. One mode where you only get one life, and once you die, that's it. Basically, it's down to the wire, whoever can survive in a three-on-three -three style elimination match. Another mode is called Multi-Mission, where it's actually going to be a playlist rotating between several different modes, some of which you know such as capture the flag, only in this case it's a briefcase, uh, capture multi-briefcases, standard team deathmatch, team deathmatch where you have to capture items that your enemies drop when they die, a la kill confirmed from Call of Duty. There's also modes where you have to kill a bunch of enemies and zombies and collect DNA samples once they're dead, and then there's actually a mode where you can actually have to kill specialized monsters and zombies that have a lot of health and can actually insta-kill you. All in all, these modes are pretty much run-of-the-mill, and most of them you've played in other third-person shooter games, maybe with the exception of the modes where you have to repetitively kill the zombies and pick up their samples. In this mode, you can respawn infinitely, so it's very much par for the course for this kind of third-person action game. And so really, when you're talking about the multiplayer of Umbrella Corps, that's it. There's only two modes, and ultimately each mode probably has around six or so maps. So really, once you've played through these once or twice, you've seen everything the game has to offer when it comes to modes and maps. So now let's break it down to the gameplay. Much like other popular third-person shooters, Umbrella Corps has a progression system based on experience points that you earn during gameplay and dependent on how well you do. Whether you have more kills, more objective captures, etc. will lead you to level up, which allows you to unlock new loadouts, new weapons, new customizations for your character, new colors, and all kinds of things that can make your character unique and different, and feels like you're advancing the more that you play the game. It's certainly nothing new, and honestly, the variety of weapons here isn't very varied. You get 
a couple different SMGs, a shotgun or so within the first few levels. All the customizations for your character are absolutely laughable because they pretty much make your character stick out. I mean, if you do anything but the standard black armor color or any of the camos for example metallic shine or the neon colors that look cool at first you soon realize that you're a sitting duck people can see you out in these maps are way easier if you use these colors making the unlockable colors completely and utterly worthless in multiplayer you're gonna want to just stick with your base stuff and never actually veer from the original loadout so that you can have a little bit more stealth capabilities the game is pretty much run and gun, you can take cover behind different areas, you can peer around corners, you can crawl through vents and corridors in order to get from point A to point B, and a lot of the maps actually have multiple floors and levels. It's pretty cool because some of the maps here are very reminiscent and or taken directly from the Resident Evil series, including being inside and outside the Raccoon City Police Department, being in an African style village from Resident Evil 5, or that town of the Las Plagas from Resident Evil 4, the Antarctic mission is there from Resident Evil Code Veronica. So there's a lot of stuff here that directly references Resident Evil games. The problem is there really is nothing much outside of that that's unique about the game despite the zombies and monsters being there. So let's talk a little bit about that. So the undead are a constant part of the gameplay of Umbrella Core because at least visually they're always there. No matter where you look, you're probably going to be able to see a zombie shuffling around or an undead dog or a hyena or some kind of a creature that's wandering around the map while you're progressing amongst your objectives. The problem is they really don't affect matches much altogether at all. In fact, you have on your person what's called a zombie jammer. Don't ask me how that works because you think they would have used it in a Resident Evil game if it actually existed. By which zombies and the undead will not attack you. It's almost like they don't even know you exist. So unless you actually accidentally shoot a zombie or you get shot yourself and your zombie jammer gets damaged, the undead are never a factor in a matchup. You can completely ignore them and you'll never have any kind of an influence on the outcome of a competitive match. Now there's a few exceptions. Like I said, if you shoot a zombie, you'll actually anger it and it'll come after you, and sometimes you'll be trying to shoot an opponent, accidentally shoot a zombie, and next thing you know, a couple zombies that you clipped come after you and start eating you, and it could be a little bit of a hindrance. In addition, if you get shot, but you survive and escape your enemy, you might have your jammer damage. Now that means that any nearby enemies are going to sniff you out, a la the Resident Evil games, and come after you. This is kind of a unique element because I've never played a third person shooter before where you're on the run not only from enemies who are trying to kill you with guns but then also the undead sometimes of you know get alerted to your presence and are chasing after you it could be a pretty neat thing to land a hit on an enemy run away and then you find out a couple seconds later they actually died because a mob of undead jumped on top of them and they were unable to help themselves it is kind of something cool and it's a cool gimmick that actually for at least the first few rounds that you're playing may grab your interest and make the game feel kind of unique in that regard. The gunplay and combat of Umbrella Corps is pretty standard and nothing much to write home about. You're going to have your primary weapon by which you can hip fire, you can look down the sights for better zoom and a little bit more damage and more accuracy, you can shoot around cover so that after you take cover you can actually do blind fire or peek over cover to get a little bit more accuracy as well. You're going to have your secondary loadout such as grenades or GPS tracking devices or motion detectors that'll help you out in a map especially if you're trying to track down one remaining person on the opponent's team. Things like that that you unlock over time can be pretty useful but all of it is pretty standard fair and exactly what you've done in other third person shooters before except for the melee combat which is pretty unique you pull out this giant looking sword almost like a glaive kind of a deal it glows and actually heats up if you hold down the attack button and when you release it you'll do this crazy lunging stab that leads to a crazy execution style instant kill that's gory it's unique it's different it's something that's unique to this game at least from what I've seen and it really for the first few hours of gameplay you're gonna have a lot of fun trying to sneak up on opponents and execute them from all different directions it's a lot of fun in that regard so I've described the game to you, now let's talk about my experience with it. When I first booted up Umbrella Core, I gave the single player campaign a shot for about a half an hour. I became incredibly bored with it and realized there's no reason to play it. This game was designed primarily for multiplayer, so I jumped right in. When I did, I was actually pleasantly surprised. There were a few glaring problems with the game from the get-go, but once I kind of got past them, I actually had some really silly fun for about an hour and a half as I played this game online with random people, 
trying to eliminate them and being the last man standing on my team added to a lot of tenseness and suspense, and also trying to rush around, taking care of the objectives with infinite spawns, and actually seeing all the different places that were very reminiscent, if not to a T, representations of stages from the Resident Evil franchise, actually added to my enjoyment. So for the first couple of hours of my playing Umbrella Core, I actually thought the game was pretty poor, but it was a forgivably silly fun kind of experience. Yes, the frame rate constantly fluctuates from a smooth 60 silky frames per second all the way down into the single digits whenever you get into a crazy firefight of a bunch of people. It's absolutely unacceptable for a current gen game to do that and it really hurts when you're trying to get that last kill or you're in a huge firefight with a bunch of enemies when the frame rate makes the game basically unplayable. But at the same time, it's just so much silly fun to be killing these zombies and running around getting cool instant kill execution fighting the Las Plagas while other people are shooting at you and throwing grenades from across the map. It really just feels like a unique gaming experience. And then I came back on day two, and it had completely changed. After only 24 hours of being released, players had already horribly broken Umbrella Core, found all the crazy abusable stuff, and turned the game into an unfun, uncompetitive mess. First off, the more you play, the more you unlock, and ultimately people are going to find the best loadouts. But within 24 hours, everyone had equipped these motion control trackers. So as soon as you're trying to find someone on a map, it makes it so easy. You can actually see them through walls. Once you get that item, you're never going to want anything else. It's incredibly overpowered. Hip fire. It sucks. It does almost zero damage in this game, especially because the frame rate keeps dipping whenever you fire at something. Chances are you're going to miss, and it does so much less damage than looking down the sights that hip firing and even doing kind of blind cover fire is completely and utterly worthless. There were a few times when I should have got double or triple kills, but my hip fire did so little damage that I just got slaughtered by someone looking down the sights. It's utterly unbalanced and a complete joke. But by far, the absolutely worst thing about Umbrella Core are the melee attacks. They instantly kill every single time. To make matters worse, they're almost undefendable. The only way to avoid one is if you were also going for a melee attack at exactly the same time as your opponent, by which you'll clash, bounce off of each other, and then you'll both get a second chance to try to execute each other with a melee attack. They also teleport across rooms through items and walls and cover. There were numerous times when I had maybe two or three zombies or monsters between myself and a human who was running in the room. They would activate a melee attack, teleport through the room, and insta-kill me. It's incredibly overpowered, it's incredibly unbalanced, it's broken as shit. I can't believe the game developers didn't know that the melee attacks were completely and utterly unfair. It actually got to the point that on certain maps, people were in such an enclosed space, they would put away their guns and only run around using these knives because they were so incredibly overpowered. If you actually wanted to play the game like you should be playing it like a shooter, you lost no matter what by default. It's pathetic, it's really poorly designed, and I just can't believe it. In addition, I just can't help feeling the game feels like it's either unfinished or unpolished. I mean, just when you're walking across the floor, you're walking in such a weirdly just robotic, smooth movement. What human walks like that? I mean, we added in kind of camera bob and stuff to games a decade ago. And the fact that it's not in Umbrella Core is just kind of astounding. It feels like you're hovering over the ground rather than actually touching it with your feet. The fact that the frame rate fluctuates so ridiculously constantly. Every time you get into a major fight, especially if there's zombies or dogs involved, all of a sudden you lose track of what's going on and you can't get a beat on anything because the frame rate dips into the teens or lower. It's completely unacceptable in a competitive shooter in this day and age that they couldn't get the frame rate right. And it certainly isn't because there's a massive amount of detail in the graphics or anything like that. I mean, you can tell that they kind of skimped on every single corner and cut every single shortcut into this game to get it released. I don't understand how it's not optimized to run at a steady frame rate so you can actually play the game. And then, of course, the melee attacks are absolutely unacceptable. In any game where you're going to instantly kill someone if you're even remotely near them, no matter what circumstance, no matter what's between you and them, that's a joke. There were actually times when I had my gun drawn, beat it on someone, was firing directly into their head, they teleported through my bullets, and insta-killed me. That's bullshit. And, you know, initially this game is fun for a few hours, 
scores, but then when you finally try to play and maybe get a little bit better at the game, and you realize how bad of a game it actually is, you just have to shrug and say, what a piece of fucking donkey shit. And so I really hate to report it, after playing Operation Raccoon City and getting completely ripped off, and paying $60, I've now paid $30 for a discount bargain basement style competitive shooter game of which I've played about 4 hours of gameplay of and I will never touch again. Umbrella Core is a piece of fucking shit. This game should never have been made. It has so many flaws that have been solved a decade or more ago by very similar style games. You can tell they did not have a big production budget. The game was obviously rushed and or they cut tons of corners to get this out to market. It's not very fun after the first few initial hours. I'll be honest with everyone here. I can't recommend you play it. I can't recommend that you even touch it unless it ever goes free. If you're like a PSN or Xbox Live subscriber and they've got those free to play games during the month, then maybe for a laugh, download it and play it. But don't spend any money on a stinker like this. You could go to your bargain bin at your local game shop and pick up any third person shooter game. It's gonna feel better than this. If anything, the only little inkling of fun that you can get is playing a third person shooter in a Resident Evil reminiscent stage. Like, I really liked playing on an Antarctic stage or the Lost Plagas Village from these different Resident Evil games. But once that kind of nostalgia factor weared off, I just didn't want to play this broken piece of crap anymore. So all things considered, the fact that you only get a little bit of enjoyment out of it, the single player is completely and utterly fucking worthless, the online multiplayer has a terrible fluctuating frame rate that makes it unplayable, the jokishly bad walk animations, the insanely overpowered melee attacks, hip fire that's completely and utterly useless, I give Umbrella Core a 3 out of 10. Don't play it. It's functional, but it's a laughable joke. Skip this petrified dog turd and go play something else that's worth your time. <sighs> Another shitty spin-off down. Thank God. Thanks for watching this review, everyone, and if you enjoyed it, please consider sharing it with a friend. In addition, please check out the video description where you'll find links to such things, such as my raw gameplay of Umbrella Core over on my DSP Gaming channel, as well as my Amazon Associate link and my Patreon. Thanks a lot, I'll see you next time for another Honest Game Review. Peace out.